Hey, what's up? How's it going? This is Ben Puffin Forest here. Um, today I'm just gonna make another live video, kind of have to have a little bit of a discussion on um, movies and RPGs and, and kind of comparing the two. And what I want to talk about is the fact that um, we will compare our RPG sessions to a movie and TV shows, but there's a lot of differences between TV shows and movies and RPGs. And while they're they're like next door neighbors and they're really close to each other, there's a lot of similarities. I think that that while we can look to them and take inspiration, I think that there's um, there's still a lot of differences between the two that I think that people don't really look at or they overlook. And I think that that, that sometimes can cause some conflicts. And so this is just me uh, kind of comparing and contrasting um, uh, RPGs and movies and TV shows. So um, it's when you think about the development or the production style of a movie, okay, what happens is that you have uh, someone or a group of people who sit down and they say, I want to write a movie. And so they script it out. They write, this is going to happen, and this is going to happen, and this person's going to do this thing. And they're talking about it. They say different dot lines of dialogue, and they spend weeks and weeks, maybe months, working on a script. And then finally, they get the script together, and they give it to actors. And the actors read through the lines, and they figure out what's going to happen, and they do the practicing on their own, and then they finally say the line, and uh, then... They'll do like multiple takes and then and then after it's all said and done, people watch it, they see the movie all together and they 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 think like, oh, okay, we're missing a, a, a scene here. And so they cut out a certain part and then put a new thing in. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that there's a lot of pre-production work and polishing that goes into the production of anything that, that is like a movie or a TV show. And in an RPG, we don't do that. We make stuff up on the fly, or like even if you go into it like pre with with some kind of a plan ahead of like this is what's going to happen. All of our players are doing stuff in the moment. They think like, okay, I want this to happen, and not only that, but we don't get to go back and change stuff that didn't work. You know, we're kind of stuck with whatever happens in the narrative. So if one of the players commits and says, "I'm going to do this," and we think, okay, cool, we're going to do it and you do the thing, that thing is now in the narrative whether you want it or not. And so later on, after the fact, you can't really, like, you can kind of retcon it sometimes. I, personally, like, sometimes I retcon stuff. Um, I'll talk to the players and be like, hey, this thing happened. Would you prefer if we did it this other way? And it's like, okay, you know. But um, it's some people are, like, really hard line about it. But I, it's, the thing is that, we're, you know, you're just, you're making stuff up as you go along. And so... Um, sometimes what I worry is that GMs will hold players to the standard of saying, okay, you know, you guys commit, like, this is, we're going to have this narrative and you're going to say these lines and we'll, it's going to be a really dramatic moment. And sometimes it just doesn't, it just falls flat. You know, it just kind of falls on its face and, uh, people can't really think of anything. Um, it'll be like, there'll be a scene where you, there's a dead, there's someone who's dying. You got a friend and he just got, blah, he just gets hit in the chest and he's dying in front of you, and the player runs over, and he's like, no, and he's, he's gonna say a line, and he can't think of anything to say in that moment, and he's like, man, that sucks. And that's a line, you know? Um, and, uh, and, and even in real life, I mean, like, people, like, when a character dies, you know, they don't have some big, like, sometimes, they, they really won't have some big, long epic soliloquy that they have prepared that summarizes life and the meaning of everything. Like if, if someone does that, like that's something someone has to sit down knowing that they're going to do this ahead of time. And sometimes we can plan stuff out, you know, we could think about stuff in the head, in our head, you know, but there's, there's little surprises and also there's dice. Okay. You know, directors don't have to worry about dice. Okay. We got dice involved in it too. They're throwing random elements, you know? So the fact that, uh, like, like the writers for, um, for a TV show, they don't have to expect like, hmm, is King Arthur really going, you know, or is, um, is Arthur really going to pull out Excalibur? Maybe he's going to fail this time. Like, you know, we have all these random elements that play in and the fact that a narrative emerges from it is, you know, in some ways it's almost kind of like luck. <laughs> um, but, uh, it's the reason why we play is because we like that, random element we like the chaos you know we like the fact that 
there's kind of that anarchy that things don't go exactly as planned that there's that surprise that it's it's not as crisp as a movie it's 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 got some like rough edges it's sort of wild and um really i think if you were actually to go into an rpg session saying like i want it to be like a movie you would kind of have to tell the players beforehand like this is what's going to happen this is going to be the narrative this is what we're trying to tell and then and then in that, they would be mostly more like actors in a movie. I definitely, definitely would not want to be playing in something like that. But um, it's it's just because it's not a game, you know. But anyway, the point I'm getting at is the fact that, like, sometimes what will happen is that you set up a scene and you're like, ooh, this is going to be really cool. And then it just doesn't pay out, you know. It's like, um, it, 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 it's, if, if anything, it's not even on the players. It's just like sometimes they just... They want to step up and they want to have a line. They want to have that scene. And you just, you just, nothing comes to your head. You know, you just, you just, you know. And um, I, for me personally, when I like to, I run games, I will throw a lot of different things at the players. Like, ooh, what about this? What about that? What about this? I like to throw a lot of different scenes. And then sometimes they just, just there's no spark there you know there's it's like it's close we got a little bit of something but it's you know it's missing something and um or sometimes like the player wants to have a line they want to have a scene and it just doesn't pay out the, the way that you think it's going to pay out and uh you know that's what happens that's an rpg i it's almost i kind of feel like the difference comparing movies between um rpgs and movies is it's almost like saying um, if you were to be watching a home run derby or something, or, or some kind of like, if you're watching baseball and someone has a highlights reel of all the home runs and then you're like, wow, that's really cool. And then you go to an actual game and then you see people, um, missing and it's like, like, what, what the heck? Why can't people hit the ball? Like it's right there in front of them. And it's like, you know, not everything that you throw out there is a hit, you know, sometimes it's a miss. Um, and not only that, but there's two things also as well is that most of the time people miss, you know, most of the time you throw out lines and it's, it just doesn't work. But then not only that, but sometimes people don't want it to be like a movie. Some people don't like the fact that it's a movie is kind of in some ways it's almost like sterile or it's, it's like too crisp, you know, everything just works out too perfectly. All the dialogue is too a certain way, but there, there's something about, playing in an actual RPG where like the dialogue is a bit rough and people are setting people up for jokes and then it's not really, you know, it's not really working out that well, but that's how people talk in real life. That's how we act, you know? And, um, I don't know what to say, <laughs> you know? Um, it's, uh, I actually, I, when I compare the two, I, I feel like a movie is like a fully finalized and completed product. When you sit down to watch it, like, People have decided this is what's going in the movie and you watch it or you watch a film or something and everything is in there that should be in there. But when you watch, when you're playing in an RPG, um, it's more like a brainstorming process where people are kind of throwing stuff out there. They're testing the waters, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't work. Um, and it kind of has this, there's a natural flow about it where they're going in a certain direction and then oh, you know, we can't go this way or there's an issue or eh, it's not really as fun as we thought. And then it goes another way and people kind of feeling stuff out and suggesting stuff. And I, I think that that is a very um, natural part of playing RPGs or um, sometimes when you're playing an RPG, there'll be like problems that come up where the players are getting stuck and they're not having fun or there's an issue. And I think that sometimes the GM has to step in and, and kind of sort those things out and fix them and make sure that, that everyone's, you know, the storyline keeps moving, the things keep moving. And that's not something you see in an art, in a, in a movie, you know, but, uh, it's because we aren't watching a movie. We're playing an RPG and there's a natural, um, flow where you're trying to, you know, you just, you just work stuff out. It's not, it's a, it's a brainstorming session and, in brainstorming sessions, you throw 20 things at a wall and five of them stick. And those are the five that people remember. Those are the fives that are narrative. And the, the other 15 that don't, they just, they're gone. You know, we just forget about them. We just move on. I think that part of the reason why I want to talk about this video is, is that um, sometimes GMs will feel like the players are failing, you know, or something. Or the, the scene's not working and uh, everyone's really trying their best. And sometimes I feel like the best thing to do is just kind of move on from the scene.
um, or maybe add something else into it that adds a little bit of spice, you know, um, and just kind of work on it, see, see what you can do. But um, just because you throw something at the wall and the players just kind of, they just can't think of any material or maybe they're just not feeling it. Um, it's not, it's not your fault. It's not, it, that's not your issue. It's just, it happens, you know? Um, and that's why I'm not, I'm not really as bothered by when I throw something at the players and they just like slap it to the ground. Like, no, I, obviously if I had, you know, a better under, understanding of the relationship with, uh, with the players and stuff like that, everything that I threw at the players would be perfect. It'd all be home runs, but that's not what we, that's, unrealistic really is is more to kind of keep stuff moving and then if things if the players are having fun with something then add more material to it and start growing and expanding it and then if the players don't like something then just kind of like push it off to the like okay that's it and once again you wouldn't see that in a movie because if you if in a movie or a tv show if you introduce an element there's an understanding that it's going to come up later on in the plot line but in uh or if you introduce a plot line, you feel like you have this obligation to, to see it all the way to the end, even if the players don't have fun with it or are not engaged with it. And the reality is that, like, in a TV show, you know what's coming at the end, and so you knew, oh, okay, this is going to be the payoff, and you can write, you can reverse write into it, you know, from the beginning going out. But uh, in an RPG... Uh, you don't know what the players are going to be engaged with and what they aren't. And so sometimes what I'll do is I'll throw many different elements at them. And then if they like something, then we go with it. And if they don't like something, then we, it, it just kind of dies. There are other factors as well that, that play a role in it as far as there are some things that are fun to spectate that may not be fun to play through. Because players feel a strong connection to one character, um, there are certain things that they'd be okay with in a movie, but then when they're playing the character, they, they wouldn't enjoy. Like, for example... If one of the characters um, just like bowed out for like half the TV series or half the movie and they didn't get to do anything, um, that's something that that's perfectly fine in a TV show or a movie. But if you're the guy playing that character, you would not be horrendously happy with with being out of of the situation. There's some stuff that you see in movies and TV shows that don't play out as 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 fun. And um, even I mean, this video can even apply when you're talking about to some extent, video games where, um, and actually I think that RPGs, I was about to say RPGs are probably closer to video games, but um, the, the problem is that video game is such a large category of stuff. I don't know exactly what to compare it to, but if you talk about RPG video games, you know that during a cutscene, it's it feels like a movie. It feels like very, the, you know, the narrative is really strong, but once you get to a certain point, once you give the control over to the players, they're going to be running around like, busting pots and pans and breaking stuff. And um, I love that. I like that. I like the, it's the fact that, that players like playing in a world because they like seeing how the world reacts off of what they're doing. And it, once again, this is going to vary a lot between players. Some players do feel like I am part of this world. I am this person. I am this character. Uh, but I, I find more often than not, a lot of players like seeing how the world reacts to them and doing stuff to see what how the world is going to bounce off of them and their interactions. And so they like doing things that are a little bit crazy, a little bit wild, because they want to see it. It's almost like they're the funny man and the world is a straight man. And they want to see the the kind of um, one work off of the other. It, it really depends. Once again, the, the players vary quite a bit on that. Uh, but anyway, the point I'm getting at is that you wouldn't, once again, it's because the PCs don't act like NPCs. You know, NPCs will stand in one place, they'll do something over and over and over again, but PCs will just run around randomly doing whatever they want. Um, and so you can't act, expect PCs to act like NPCs. One of the things I want to make really, really perfectly clear is that I think, I think it's good to point to movies and TV shows because it's it's a common pool, you know, like and and really they're they're really close, you know. They're both narrative things, you know. They both have narrative to be a, a very strong element of them often, and um, you can point to them and you can point to um, to movies, and it's it's something common that we all know. Like for example, if someone were to say, "I want to play a game that has a tone like Lord of the Rings." Most people have seen Lord of the Rings, and so because of that, when you point to it, you can say, "Okay, this is this is what you want to go for." But it's it, the the what I also oppose is the concept that 
the purpose of of RPGs is to become a movie, you know, and that's that's to me a little bit weird. Or sometimes people will go from an argument like, "Well, you wouldn't see this in a movie," you know, or and I think that I think it can be used like you that argument can be used to talk about the absurdity of something. I think it's kind of useful. It has it. Okay, let me explain. It has its uses, but sometimes there's just some stuff that is more fun in an RPG that, yeah, it would if you were in watching a movie, you would not like this. So players like having certain freedoms that maybe characters in movies wouldn't have. Um, so that that is one thing I kind of understand. Like, I kind of get it, but it's it's like I... I'm on the fence about that because some I've, I've seen it taken to such a far extreme of sometimes people will judge RPGs by how movie-like it is. And... I don't like that because I feel like that's, you know, you're just comparing a medium, one medium to another medium. You're just saying like, how, how good is this book is based off of how much CGI it has. You know, it's like books don't have CGI, you know, you can't judge it. But anyway, I think there's, there's also a little bit of a tragedy involved in that you as the GM have been planning this scene out. You've been thinking about it. You've been, um, 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 ruminating on it, you've been thinking, oh, they could do this, they could do this, they could say that, and and imagining in your head the way that a certain scene is going to play out. But then when you present it to the players, they have that one instant to react to it. And so they're just going to say whatever, you know, is the best idea that they can come with, up with off the top of their head. And sometimes they come up with, like, really good one-liners and really great stuff. And then other times they just can't think of anything. And so it can be frustrating from the GM's perspective because they're like, oh, it should have played out like this and this and this and then done this. And because the players have to react in the moment, they don't come up with this witty one liner that you had in your head. They don't come up with, you know, the the thing, the idea that you had. Um, And it, you know, that's. In real life, we we often have to struggle with stuff and work through it, and um, we sometimes don't come up with witty one-liners, you know, off the top of our head. Now that being said, everyone has stories of of great one-liners that they do, but those are, you know, and when 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 you hit them, it's great. But you shouldn't go into the session being like every single scene is going to be like that, because if you do, you're going to be disappointed because. You set people up for a scene and sometimes it just doesn't pay out. You know, you just, you can't think of anything in the moment. Even if it's, even if it's a really good scene. Like this is a really funny moment. The players are laughing and um, there's got to be some, something you can do. And then nothing. You just blank on it. Which leads to an entire, another conversation, which we were skipping over, which is, do you want it to be like a movie? Because that's that's one of the things that, that sometimes people like is the fact that it's not artificial, that people just react normally. Part, part of the reason why we like to do what we do is because um, we'll be playing a game, and even though the storyline is fictional and everything is happening is imaginary, like the reactions that you're getting from people are genuine. Like there's a there's a sincerity behind it where someone's like, oh, no, and they get hit where they're like genuinely shocked about something that happened. And that's 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 where like some sometimes the areas between the character and the player are kind of blurring where they find out like a twist where it's like, I'm your father or something like, oh, no. And that's that's partially the the player is having that reaction and um, the fact that there's like there's that authenticity there. Um, and it's it's kind of raw, and and sometimes what happens is that whenever people have an emotional response, sometimes they do react, they emote, um, but other times, sometimes people become stoic. Actually, when they when they emote, like they're like, and they don't say anything because um, sometimes people will lock up when they're when they're having actual like emotions. Um, uh, they don't, you know, it, it just depends. Different people do different things, but that can be frustrating when you're trying to extract drama out of someone you're having you want to have them dramatize and they're looking for more dramatic dramatization they don't necessarily want an emotional reaction per se let me clarify um if someone has a normal reaction to it where it's like my character is like oh that sucks that's a perfectly normal reaction like that's what that's what you'd see in in real life like some sometimes you know is that 
uh, people, something bad happens and people are like, man, that sucks. But from a GM's perspective, sometimes we want this big soliloquy or this big emotional thing. And um, that is something that is that people in some ways like manufacture. Like that is something that people do that is um, emotive. And so really when GMs are asking for that, they're asking for dramatization. They're not asking for a air quotes authentic reaction. Um, uh, so there's another aspect of this which involves dice and the fact that, once again, in TV shows and movies, they don't have to rely on dice. They can just make stuff up, and so it can be perfectly crisp and clear and exactly the thing that everyone wants. But when you involve dice, you get... Sometimes people waste their time or it goes off in certain plot lines that are kind of boring or um, sometimes it's like it, you're setting up a scene and then the dice are just not in your favor and just collapses in on itself or... Um, you know, you, it's going in a weird direction and you kind of have to make that dramatic, even though that would be, you know, boring or whatever. Um, and that's, that's what happens when we use dice, um, and you have these random elements into the game. I, I think that really, um, dice are where a lot of the humor actually comes from when you're talking about like Dungeons and Dragons and stuff. I, I think most of the time when people play it, there's, there's actually a lot of humor that kind of underscores what we're doing. And part of it is just the fact that people, when they communicate, when they talk, there's a lot of humor involved. Like, very, most of the time people are cracking, like, if you're a bunch of guys or girls sitting around, you know, having a conversation, like, there's a lot of jokes that are getting cracked. And that's, that is how us people normally communicate is, is with humor um, a lot of times. And, um, and that, that comes across in, in a lot of the games. Uh, but in addition, you have dice. And the dice give you failure, and from failure is where a lot of the comedy comes from. Because you have people, they open up a chest, and ah, they get attacked, and then they get wrapped up and then blah, 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 down the stairs. And there's something inherently funny in that. There, there's some inherent comedy there in seeing people suffer, um, in seeing ba these bad things happen, or when um, it causes that you have some kind of a trope where like, oh, this is what's going to happen, and then suddenly it goes against trope and it's because of the dice. It's because of the randomness. It's because of, of that, that you have comedy. So for example, um, let's say the players are like riding out of town and they're like, dun, 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 and they're, they're riding out to, to go somewhere and they're like, Oh wait, we forgot the map. And you turn around and come back. You know, you wouldn't, you know, most of the time you wouldn't see that. Or if you did see that, it'd be in a comedy. And it's, it's because you don't, you don't see a lot of failure in movies. Uh, most, most of the time heroes are, are very capable people. And most of the time when you see people failing through problems, uh, those tend to be more uh, comedies. And so that's, that's one of the areas where you get kind of the, the difference between, you know, TV shows, movies and, and RPGs is because, um, there's you got the dice and you have this inherent comedy and the GM might be trying to tell this serious story and he's trying to tell a serious story but then you have the body that's like slumped off onto the ground that's hitting its head like bah, 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 you know or something or um you have people just struggling to to subdue this one goblin who's like beating him up or something and so um once again that could be the dice could be adding additional tone that's causing a tonal shift that is 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 taking maybe kind of deflating some of the drama that the gm was originally intending to be there um personally i love it i think it's hilarious and i love that kind of stuff i i personally lean my games more towards being something that has try to have mostly comedy and then little bits of drama here or there but um if if you are someone who is a GM and you are leaning towards doing a more dramatic game, um, you'd have to kind of tone down some of the failures or um, or kind of work around them so that way they they are not they are not adding comedy to it if, if in areas where you wouldn't necessarily want it. Um, but in that note, as as far as comedy and, and humor and stuff like that, um, I remember I I was some people were talking about the Lord of the Rings as like I do a serious game. And it wasn't until I really went back and took another look at um, Lord of the Rings, and it actually has a lot of comedy involved in it. You know, you have characters uh, making one-liners. You got the Gimli saying, you know, Gimli and Legolas counting off, and then you got um, there's a line with like Pippin. Okay, so you have the Council of the, of the Ring, and they decide what to do, and the the group comes together, and Elrond's like, therefore you will be known as the Fellowship of the Ring, and the music swells up. And then it suddenly kind of dies out. And then Pippin goes, great, 
where are we going again? And it's it's a great line, and so it's a lot of comedy um, involved in that. And so a lot of will action movies will have these bits of comedy to kind of break up these more serious moments. So anyway, that video, I just wanted to compare and contrast and talk about, uh, you know, kind of published work versus RPGs and just kind of talk about the fact that, look, you know, an RPG is, is not a published work, okay? It is uh, an incomplete thing that we slowly kind of work on together and, uh, you know, we don't really get to edit stuff and so it's not going to have that crisp thing. Like, just, just don't, I'm just telling you as GMs to not be hard on your players because you're you're setting up the scene and you're trying to have it go a certain way. It just doesn't work out. Also, with a compare and contrast, uh, sometimes what happens when you compare two things that causes people to um, say, like, one's better than the other. Like, which one do you prefer? Like, everyone that I know loves both. I don't know anyone who plays RPGs who's like, screw movies, they're stupid, you know, or TV shows, you know. Something. I just wanted to compare them just to, because I, I feel like we, we take a lot of inspiration from it and maybe we need to be considering that or thinking about it. And wherever you decide uh, to do is cool. As long as your players are having fun, you're having fun. Uh, so have a great game and I'll see you guys on the next video. Uh, thank you. Uh, appreciate you guys for watching.